welcome to all greetings from dhanush engineering service india private limited myself srinivas i am representing on the behalf of dhanush engineering service india private limited okay so as we all know that for any type of building as how the architect or a civil or a structural engineer is important in the same way electrical people are also very much important for the building okay so or in other way in other way for any type of building if you want to occupy air water and electricity are the most important things to occupy the building so now in this model or in this presentation we are going to discuss about the electrical design and drafting now before going in depth about the electrical design and drafting first what do you mean by design and drafting so let me tell you in a one word answer design design means calculations or sizing of equipments okay like how much size of the transformer we require what should be the size of the generator we require for the building that is nothing but a design now whatever the calculation which we perform which we do in excel sheets or through a software so i can't give this excel sheet or a software to a technician for the execution of the project so what we are doing we are going with a concept called as a drafting so for a drafting we are using a tool called autocad so in autocad we are going to draw the complete single line diagram circuit wiring so that i'll explain you in the next session in the in the coming uh, time so that is about the drafting so drafting in the sense pictorial representation of all the calculations through a software called autocad that is about the drafting now let us get about the electrical design drafting so in this electrical design and drafting we are in this model of electrical design and drafting we are going to learn about the first thing is basics so what do you mean by basics so basics in the sense we already studied what do you mean by voltage what do you mean by current and apart from this we all know that in electrical we have three different types of loads what are they a resistive load inductive load and a capacity load okay let us take an example i have a load of some 4 kilowatt i have a load of some 4 kilowatt so now if i asked anyone what is a formula to calculate the current for this 4 kilowatt load the first thing which strike in mind is ohms law v equal to ir okay but guys v equal to ir is not applicable for the load of 10 4 kilowatt okay because v equal to ir is an applicable only for a small resistor if you want to calculate the current for a resistor then we apply the ohms law but if i have a load of 4 kilowatt i want to calculate the current we have a formula called p equal to va cos phi or p is equal to root 3 va cos phi now the question rise here whether we need to use single phase formula or three phase formula okay so who is going to give this condition is in india we use a standards called nema national electrical manufacturing association so nema has given a certain standard for the design engineer that if the load is given in terms of watts and kilowatts we will consider as in single phase and if if the load is given in terms of kva whether to consider single phase or three phase by considering this conditions we are going to decide the calculation of the current for a, any type of load that is about the first thing is we are going to study about the basics okay now the second thing is now for any type of the building what are the different types of loads electrical wise we are classify the loads into resistive inductive and capacitive in the same way in a reality electrical loads are classified into three types okay two types first internal and external now let us coming into internal so what are the whole loads we'll have in your home internally so people says that lights fans okay and when i ask to any mechanical guy or electrical they'll say the same thing like fridge geyser okay vacuum cleaner chimney guys these are not considered as an loads okay electrical wise loads are classified into three category the first one is lighting load second one is power loads and the third one is ac loads now lighting loads in the sense the loads which are less than 100 watts like example lights fans and exhaust fan that all comes under the category of lighting load and the next one is power loads so power loads as you told geyser fridge and all these are called as an appliances okay we don't consider that as an uh, that as an our electrical appliances are connected in a sockets so whenever you are designing any project we need to take the load of the socket not the load of your appliances so we need to calculate how many number of sockets we require and the third one is ac calculations okay now first let us get into the lighting so how do we calculate the number of lights required in a particular room so generally whenever you are doing any project the first thing is you'll get an architectural layout now once you got an architectural layout it's we need to calculate how many number of lights require to see the object of everything okay so generally when you're going with a 2 bhk flat if i call to a technician he will put a number of holders and he'll we can plug in your lights over there but in reality we for a commercial buildings or industrial building we can't do that so now what we are doing is in here we are going to learn about the lighting fixture calculations so lighting fixture calculations are categorized into two way of calculation the first one is manual calculation the manual calculation is in the sense i'll be giving the catalogs like philips okay or havels or cisco led will take the catalogs from that catalog we'll take the technical parameters and we'll do the manual calculations and the next soft next way is nothing but a 
software that is nothing but a dialux so now here we are going to teach you about the uh, software called dialux evo which is an updated version that is dialux evo okay now what is the advantage of this dialux evo is first thing what is the first thing is you will get an autocad layout from the client we can take that autocad layout into dialux we can do the import of this autocad file we can do the import of this autocad file into dialux and we can construct the 3d modeling of the room where you can apply the uh, colors where you can apply the furniture so everything as in 3d modeling and then the question prices we need to calculate the number of lights okay so we can calculate the number of lights and another advantage is we can show the impact of light by switching on and another advantage is we can export that calculated uh, lights into an autocad file again so that we can take the printout and we can give it to a uh, client or an architecture or civil engineer who can execute the total project that is the first thing and another thing in dialects is we can do the indoor indoor lighting as well as an exterior like glow lighting or garden in the garden we have a pedestal lightings so we can do pedestal lighting everything we can do in a dialects evo that is a more advanced. so we teach you both the way of calculation that is manual as well as a software called dialects evo so you can see as in how the dialects evo images are there where we can construct the number of buildings also and we can show the impact show the uh, illumination of the light switching on everything we can do in dialects evo that is the advantage of dialects evo now after the light calculation the next is we are going to study about the power calculations so power calculations as I told you we need to calculate how many number of sockets we require in a particular room okay so either it might be normal or power socket like example I'll tell you in a kitchen if I provide one socket it's not sufficient because we have a lot of equipments like grinder okay oven chimney aqua guard okay toast rider we can't plug it each and every time so we need to provide sufficient number of sockets so this sufficient number of sockets can be approached in two way either we need to take the input from the client or or else we need to have a calculations which has been given by the NBC standards so we are going through that now what is NBC in the sense national building code so national building code has given a standards for calculating the number of sockets so we are going to do the number of sockets calculation in that then third type of load which is internally is the major load is nothing but AC that is air condition and we all know that AC is rated in terms of TR TR stands for ton of refrigeration so here we use a standard called ISHRAE and ASHRAE what are ISHRAE and ASHRAE is Indian Society of Heating refrigeration air conditioning engineers, American Society of Heating refrigeration air conditioning engineers. Through this standard, for a one for a small area, how much ton of AC we require? And here we are only doing the calculations of domestic cases called split AC and window AC. We are not going to do about the centralized because we hand out the project. If it is a centralized air conditioning, we hand out the project to HVAC engineers and we directly take the load and we put in your transform of a calculation. That is about the air conditioning loads. Okay, now adding up all these lighting, power and AC, which are the internal loads, you'll get the total connected load of the flat. Now, once you got the total connected load of the flat, the most important thing is we need to decide whether I need to bring single phase supply or three phase supply for a building, for a flat. Okay, how we are going to decide is according to the norms of TSPDCL, that is Telangana State Power Distribution Board Corporation Limited. So TSPDCL has given norm for that. If your flat load is up to 8 kilowatt, you can take it from single phase. If your flat load is above 8 kilowatt or if you are submersible pump which are placing in your home if it is above 3 HP then we need to bring three phase supply for the building okay now the question is I had brought three phase supply for the building now we need to do the most important thing is called load balancing sheet because I got the total load example 12 kilowatt I need to balance this 12 kilowatt equal in three different phases so to do this the most important most important model we are going to learn is load balancing sheet so by doing the load balancing sheet we'll get the size of the distribution board what is the size of the DB we require whether it's a two-way DB or four-way as you can see in the images we have a two-way DB four-way DB six-way DB likewise we need to calculate the size of the distribution board and what is the incomer circuit breaker size and what is the outcomer circuit breaker size so we are going to get the size of the DB and the load should be equally balanced in three phases that is R phase Y phase B phase this is about the load balancing sheet now these are all the internal loads now coming to external loads what are the external loads will have for your building generally external loads for any building will be only motors that motor we are using applying application for lift or we are using the application for water motor or we are using the application for firefighting so now we are also going to calculate the capacity of this motor so we have a general thumb rule to calculate the capacity of the motor but if you want exactly we'll get we'll take from the different engineers like mechanical engineer and a plumbing engineer then we'll, we'll calculate the lift motor capacity 
okay now the most important question rises if i am putting an inductive load what is the drawback the drawback is it will reduces the power factor because the d4 power factor which you're getting it from the government is 0.8 now if i don't maintain the 0.8 power factor then government start shooting the penalty charges for us in your bill so what we need to do we need to improve the power factor now how can we improve the power factor so when you're going with internal we are not going to we are not going to look out for the power factor why because all the internal loads which are single phase will get a capacitor by default like fan you'll get a capacitor fridge will get a capacitor all by default but when it comes to three phase no one is going to give a capacitor so we need to put a separate capacitor banks or we also call as an apfcp panel that is you can see the image so automatic power factor correction or control panel or we also call this in capacitor banks so as you can see in the image we have a capacitor banks and we have a contactors we have a circuit breakers we have a cables so everything we need to do this calculation so we are going to study more depth about the apfcp panel okay that is about the capacitor banks wherein we can improve the power factor to your required power factor of the client so, okay now we got the capacitor banks now adding up all the flat loads we'll get the floor loads now once you got the floor loads we'll get the mdb load main distribution board load so what is db db is for the individual flat smdb is for sub main distribution board it is for the floats and mdb is for the building so generally for any type of building we'll have three things one is db smdb and mdb now once you got the mdb load now we need to decide from where you need to take the supply for your building so generally again when you look out for the norms of tspdcl if your building load is more than 50 kilowatt or 60 kilowatt you can't take the power from the existing transmission line so what we are doing we are putting a separate transformer for the building now we need to define what should be the size of the transformer we require okay so how do we define the transformer see transformer is not like that we are changing in our regular basis if you are proposed once it is a like final so whenever you are defining the transformer size for any type of building we need to con consider the mdb load plus we need to take some future expansion loads also as well as we need to consider the demand factor and diversity factor for a building and then we are going to propose the transformer size okay like 630 kv is there 1000 kv is there how much size of the transformer we require that we are going to calculate the transformer size okay now once you got the transformer size the most important thing is we need to define the point of supply now what is point of supply your level kv line we have a different level uh, point of supplies level kv 33 kv 66 so once you got the transformer in kva how much is the kva required then based upon that kva we are going to calculate the we are going to decide the point of supply whether it's a level kv line or 33 kv line or 66 kv line that is about the point of supply decision so when you are defining the transformer size we are also going to calculate the ct and pts current transformer and potential transformer see we all know what is ct like which helps in carrying a current which helps in measuring a current and pt to helps in measuring a voltage so whenever you are defining the ct we require technical parameters so as you can see the name plate rating of the ct we are going to define the ct and pt calculations okay now once we have defined the ct the next steps we are going to study about the circuit breakers okay now before the circuit breaker let us know about the cables so to carry a current from this transformer to the total point of the building like to all the loads we are going to put a cables so when you're going with the cable selection cable selection people think that is only depends upon the load current no cable selection depends on the load current also as well as we need to define the number of fronts like when you see the cables we have single core two core three core three and of core and four core so we are going to define the cores as well as we are going to define the square amount of the cable as well as we are going to define the insulation which type of insulation we have like pvc we have hr pvc we have so we are going to define that insulation and the most important parameter is number of fronts so as you can see how the cable is represented in any technical autocad drawing is like you can see so the cable represented in terms of fronts core square mm and the conductor which we are using either a copper or aluminum and the insulation which we are using this all things we are going to study with the help of a material so we need to take the materials and from that material we are going to define the cable size so we are going to study about the cable size calc and the next most important parameter is circuit breakers now when coming to a circuit breaker circuit breakers we all know that it's been classified into three category first one is ht side second one is lt side and the third one is protective circuit breaker. and in the ht side we have acb vcb as you can see and the next is lt side we have mcb mccb and acb and in the uh, protective circuit breakers we have three types one is elcb rocb and rccb now the question is how we are going to select the circuit breaker for which ampere rating okay so in this model we are going to study about the circuit breaker calc so circuit breaker calculation is done 
done on based on three parameters. The first one is based on the load current. We need to select the circuit breaker. Second one is based upon the short circuit current. Now, what is short circuit current? Whenever any insulation failures occurs, or whenever any cable cut, up, uh, whenever any cable to cable short occurs, okay, at that time there's a chance of fire accident occurs, like we see in the news, electrical fire accident occurs, and people says that the fire accident occurs, circuit breaker doesn't trip. The reason is we didn't provide it exactly fault current withstanding capacity of the circuit breaker. So we need to select based upon the fault current as well as tripping time also. What is tripping time? Which means that the circuit breaker need to be trip within a particular duration. So that time we need to calculate and we need to set on the circuit breaker so that the circuit breaker will get trip in that second. That is about the tripping time. So this is overall calculations related to circuit breaker. And you can see the circuit breaker technical denotation how it is really represented. Where type of the circuit breaker, ampere rating and fault current and well as on a tripping time which takes the circuit breaker to get trip. This is about the circuit breaker. Okay, then now up to here we are done the design. Okay, now the next one is we need to do analysis whether your design is perfect or not. Okay, so how do we analysis? What are the parameters we require to analysis? The most important parameter is voltage drop. We need to consider the voltage drop because if my transformer is away of in front of your building, I need to supply to all the 10th floor. And if I'm not getting a sufficient voltage to run your fan, like we require 230 voltage and you are getting 110. So there is no use of your design. So to get 100% voltage at each and every point, we are going to study about a calculation called voltage drop calculation, which all depends upon the length and resistance of the cable so we are going to define the voltage drop and according to the standards like NEC national electrical code has defined a certain standard that if it is a lighting what should be the maximum percentage voltage drop accepted if it's a dropper what is the maximum percentage voltage drop which is accepted that is voltage drop related so we are going to define that now once your voltage drop has been done then we are going to say that your design is perfect or not that's about the voltage drop. The next one is we are most important thing is we are going to study for the earthing. So as we all know that earthing is very much important for the building. So when it comes to earthing, what are that we are going to define here is the first one is pits. How many number of pits we require? Okay. And second one is strip size. What is the size of the strip which we require? Because we use aluminum strip or copper strip to ground it for the from the building to the earth pit. So to define that strip size, we are going to do the earthing calculations as well as number of pits, whether to be connected in series or parallel and the motto of this earth thing is to maintain the overall resistance as in 1 ohm to 3 ohm for the total overall building 1 ohm to 3 ohm so that leakage current will always try to flow through a low resistance path that is about the earth thing the next one is we are going to study about the cable trace now what is the purpose of cable trace see if you have a small bunch of cables we are going with the help of conduit pipes but if you have a bigger cables we can't pass through the conduit pipes okay we have a large number of cables and bigger so we can't go with the conduit pipe so what we are doing we are going with a components we are going with a equipment called cable trace so as you can see cable trace we have a types perforated is there ladder type is there okay mesh type is there so we have a different types of cable trace now we need to define what is the size of the cable Tray required to pass the cable from one point to another point. So that is we are going to study about the cable tray calculator where we need to find out the width of the cable tray, depth of the cable tray as well as weight of your cables to give it to the manufacturer. That is about the cable trays. And the next one is we are going to study about the bus bars. Now what is bus bars? See generally if your current is very much less we are going with the cables but if your current is very huge we are going with the components called as in bus bars where in the main distribution board panel and sub main distribution board panel we are putting a bus bar. So we need to calculate that bus bar sizing and the last is we are going to study about the lightning arresters where which help which is provided on the top of the building. So as you can see in the image which is provided on the top of the building so that whenever any thunderstorm occurs it will catch us that high volume and pass away to the ground to give the protection. So till now what we have done is the design and the most important thing is we need to prepare the BOQ. What is BOQ? BOQ stands for bill of quantity. What is the purpose of this BOQ is to estimate the costing of the project because as a design engineer I need to prepare the total quantity of material required the project to be executed. So that is BOQ. Okay now so far what we have listened is only related to design. Now what do you mean by what is the next concept is drafting because I can't give this calculations or an excel sheet or a software to an execution engineer because next time the client does not approach to us so we need to do a concept called drafting where we give only the drafting to the client for the execution so whatever the calculation which we had done that we are doing the drafting so in a drafting we are going to study about the first one is fixture placements like where we need to place all the writing fixtures and draw power and ac and the next one is we need to show the circuit wiring okay as you can see the circuit wiring and the next is we are going to study about the control wiring and the most two important thing is first one is single line diagram now what is single line diagram is overall representation of the total building like mdb transfer Former, everything will be shown in a uh, SLD and the next one is individual SLD what is individual SLD from the DB to each and every point so that whenever the maintenance engineer come into picture he can start rectifying the problem with the help of this individual SLD so that's all about the drafting part so this 
complete model we are going to learn in electrical designing and crafting thank you for watching my video and hope we will see you soon